Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the A-level maths content. Uh, here we're on translating graphs so you can answer questions from exercise 4e. So translating graphs, so there's uh, two different types of movement with translating graphs. Uh, we're either going to move it up and down by a certain type of transformation or we're going to be moving it left and right by a certain type of transformation. And if you want to do a combination of two, the two of them, then you just apply both the types of transformation. First of all, we're going to be looking at sketching the graph of x squared plus 2x. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to plot them coordinate by coordinate. So we plug the x coordinates in and we work out the y coordinates from this equation. So here is what we get, and we draw a graph based on those coordinates as such. And we get this rough shape of graph. Now, what we're going to consider next is what we get if we get if we draw the graph of y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. You can see here the only difference from this graph up here to this graph down here is we've added on 1 to our equation. So let's see what happens to our coordinates as we calculate them. First one, we get 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. Now, as we draw these, plot these coordinates onto our graph, hopefully you've seen here that each of the y coordinates here is one bigger in the blue than it is in the red. So what we've done here to this uh, red graph is we've translated it up by one. Okay, so that's how we move things up and down. <clears throat> What we're going to now look at is how we move things left to right. So what we've done this time, instead of just adding on one at the end, what we've done is we've taken away one to both of the x values before we go ahead and square it or before we go ahead and times it by two. And in this case here, when we plot these graphs, this is what we get. And as we plot these coordinates, what you can see from this blue line here is that the red graph has actually moved right by one uh, in the positive x direction uh, to get to the blue graph, um, which is kind of opposite to how you would think that the transformation would work. You'd think with minusing one from all of the x values, maybe it might move it le left uh, in, the, in the negative x direction. But what's actually happening here, if you can see, is that all of the y coordinates uh, from the red graph and now the y coordinates for a number that's one bigger in the blue graph down here. And that's because if we go back, then what's going to happen is the x values have to now be one bigger than they were previously to get the corresponding y value. So let's take, for example, this 2, 8 and 3, 8 here. What we're going to do with this 3 is we're going to do 3 take away 1 on both of these, uh, in both of these expressions here to get to 2 and then we apply our transformation of squaring it and times it by 2 and adding the results together. So you'd get exactly the same results if you were working with 3 on the blue graph or 2 on the red graph. So in fact all of these x values now have to be 1 bigger than they were before, hence y has to now move in the positive direction because the x values have to be bigger. Another way of thinking about it is when you're moving up and down you do that as normal but when you're moving left to right the transformation works in the opposite way to how you would expect it to work. But in fact it's, it's quite uh, understandable that that would happen. Okay so in general if we've got some function of x add on a number at the end then our graph is going to move by the vector 0a. Remember the top value of vector is how much it moves up by, and the bottom value of vector is how much it moves up by. So 0, that means 0 to the left or right. Uh, a on the bottom of this vector means it moves up by a. And when we're moving things left and right, we're going to be... Uh, if we do f of x add a, so that's add x to add a to all of the x values wherever they appear in the equation. Um, we're going to be moving by the vector minus a zero. So what I mean by minus a in the top cell of this vector here is we're actually going to move it left 
by a an up no amount. Okay, so here we can see a clear difference. In the second one, we're going to have to add on a into our uh, x value, but we're in fact we're actually going to move left by a. Okay, so here are a couple of basic graphs that we should be able to draw following our uh, rules here. So here's our standard f of x uh, equals x squared graph. And the first thing we're going to do is x minus 2 squared. Now what we're doing here is we're taking away 2 inside the bracket of our function. So what's going to happen here is the reverse of how we think our transformation is going to work because it's always by the negative of our value inside the bracket. Inside the bracket we have a minus 2 so the transformation is going to be a double negative of 2 so that's positive 2 so this is going to move it right by 2. And in the second uh, or third question here x squared plus 2 that's going to be this type of transformation where the plus 2 is outside the brackets of the squared. So we're going to move that up by 2. Just like that. Okay, the next type of graph here we're going to draw. Uh, given that f of x equals x cubed and uh, g of x equals x bracket x minus 2, sketch f of x plus 1 and g of x plus 1. So in both of these curves here, we're going to move one by uh, left by one because what we're going to do here is we're going to add one inside the bracket. So our transformation is going to be minus one. So moving it left by one will result in this graph. And moving it left by one will result in this graph. Note that when you do a graph transformation, make sure you put on any of the axes in sections so the examiner can see exactly what you're doing. Okay, here's a bit more of a difficult one. Given that h of x is 1 over x, sketch the curve with equation y equals h of x plus 1, stating any asymptotes and intersections of your axes. So this is what the standard h of x graph looks like, the 1 over x graph. But what we want is h of x plus 1. So what we've got here is we've moved everything from our red line up by 1. And what's happened as well is our asymptote that was on the x-axis here has now moved up by 1 as well. So now we've got the equation y equals 1 as our asymptote for this graph. Right, so what we have to consider now is uh, the equation of the asymptote, we have that. And now we need to consider the intersections with the axes. In this case here, we're going to have one intersection point, and that's at this point here. So let's consider what type of graph we have. Uh, in this case here, it's going to be the point where the y coordinate is going to equal 0. So if we have the graph of uh, 1 over x, and the equation of our line here is y equals h of x, that's uh, understandably 1 over x plus 1, then the equation of this graph here is y equals 1 over x plus 1. So what we need to do now to work out this coordinate here is we're going to need to solve the equation of 1 over x plus 1 equals 0 because this is going to be a coordinate where the y coordinate equals 0. So taking 1 over to the other side as we're doing in the bottom left hand of your screen here, times in through by x and uh, times in through by minus 1 and we're going to get x equals minus 1. So the root here is going to be minus 1. Okay, right then, your turn. Uh, pause the video and have a go at this question. Right, okay then, let's have a go at this question then. So the first part of the question wants us to sketch a quadratic curve. It's factorised it for us, that's nice. So we've got one intersection or one root at positive 1 and one root at minus 2. It's a quadratic curve because it has two brackets and it's going to cross through when x equals 0 at minus 2. Okay, so that's the answer to part A on separate diagrams. Uh, sketch the graphs of y equals f of x plus 2, 
and f of x uh, plus 2 outside the brackets. So the first graph is going to move. Uh, so it's got the x, uh, it's got the plus 2 inside the brackets. Now I'd th probably think that I'd move it right by 2 in the positive direction. In fact, it's actually going to move it left by 2 in the negative direction because it's always the uh, negative of what the number is inside the bracket. So before I draw my graph, I'm just going to move the coordinates. So I have my first coordinate minus 1 and my next coordinate minus 4. And then I'll plot the curve to look something like that. Now what I need to do is solve the equation to work out where this intersection is here. So what I'll do is I'll plug in um, 0 into the x here. That's going to give me f of 2. So I need to plug in 2 into this equation here. So that's 2 minus 1 is 1 times by 2 add 2 is 4. So my equation is going to cross through at 4. The next one is a slight bit more easier. In this case here, it's going to be um, y equals f of x plus 2, and that's going to move the graph up by 2. Um, so it's going to look... Let's, uh, let's expand the brackets on this to see what we get. We're going to get x squared minus x plus 2x minus 2. So if we're going to add 2 onto this equation here, my graph is going to look like x squared plus x, which is going to factorise to x plus 1 times x. So I'm going to have two intersection points, one at minus 1 and one at 0. So it's going to look something like this. Right, OK then. So the next thing we need to do is um, part C. Find the equation of the curve y equals f of x plus 2 and f of x plus 2 in terms of x. And use these equations to find the coordinates of the points where your graph crosses the y-axis. Oh, brilliant, we've already really done that. So the equation of this curve here is going to be uh, f of x plus 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite out this equation here. But wherever there's, there's an x, I'm going to write x plus 2. So the equation of this graph here is going to be x plus 2 minus 1 uh, times by x plus 2 plus 2. And simplifying this, I'm going to get x plus 1, x plus 4. Uh, so that's the equation of that graph, which is exactly what I should have here, roots at minus 1 and minus 4. So that's the equation of f of x plus 2. And in this case here, I've already worked out f of x, close bracket, plus 2, which was x bracket x plus 1. And I worked out the roots through that. Right, OK then. So after this video, have a go at questions from exercise 4e. Make sure you do plenty of practice on these types of questions because uh, they are quite easy only if you've had a go at a lot of them. Thanks for watching.